All right. I have a question for you. So you seem to be a fan of movies, television, media in general. What? All right, let me ask you. You seem to be a fan of television, film, uh, media in general. You're also a fan of anime. Yeah. How much influence do you think that anime has on the film industry in the past? And how much influence do you think it can have on the film industry going forward? Anime has a huge influence on the film industry. If you look at a lot of movie scenes from The Matrix, it comes from another anime. I can't remember the title of the anime right now, but you can mirror, you can put the two scenes side by side mm -hmm. and they mirror each other. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for The Lion King. We talked about that, yeah. So the, yeah, yeah. We recently, recently I, I, I shared about... Uh, in a lot, uh, Disney, you can't get mad because Disney, you did it to yourself. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Lion King and then Kimba the White Lion. They're so, the same thing. So anybody who's watching this, go check out Kimba the White Lion or check out the comparison between the two. Yep. And it's frame by frame the same as far as the, ult the final picture. I heard the script and post. I heard the script and uh, pre-production was different. Uh, and, and the one that came out, yeah, <laughs> that actual film, allegedly, in the actual film was just completely this, you know, the same scene from scene. Yeah, the, the villain in White, uh, Kimba the White. First of all, his name is Kimba. The protagonist's name is Kimba, and Kimba the White Lion. The protagonist's name is Simba and Lion King. And then the villain's name is Claw and the White Lion. And the villain in Lion King, as we know, is Scar. Scar. Both hyenas, both lions. We're talking about the beef between those. Just kind of funny, but. IP is one of those things that we all have told the same stories since the beginning of time, and they really do intertwine with each other, and they really influence each other. We don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, but we do know Kimber the White Lion became long before Lion King, about 30 years before. Um, and a lot of movies, um, if you've seen Black Swan, mm -hmm. if, have, you ever, have you ever heard of Perfect Blue? I've not. It's one of the top animated films of all time. Anime films, I should say. Not animated, because animated is more American. It's one of the top anime films of all time. Next to Spirited Away, Princess Mononosuke, Howl's Moving Castle, and Perfect Blue. I believe Perfect Blue ranks four or five. Don't ask me how I know this. But Perfect Blue was this cult classic that came out back in the 90s by a very famous um, Japanese director. It's a very psychedelic, trippy movie. If you see Black Swan... Black Swan takes a lot of scenes from Perfect Blue, almost mirroring them side by side. But the reason why I'm less upset about that and why I'm less upset about The Matrix is because Darren Aronofsky, the guy who directs Black Swan, bought the film rights to Perfect Blue. Oh, wow. So since he owned the film rights, he, he, he can do that. I see. And he admitted to doing it. The guy from The Matrix have openly admitted to being inspired by anime. I see. And they ripped. Well, I, I can't. So can we say they really ripped? You know, like at that point, it's different. yeah. At that point, it's different. You went the business route you're supposed to. Exactly. But here's the problem, though, of that. The thing with drag. So there's. I've I've told you about this. How the Russo brothers, as far as their film posters, rip. Um, the Dragon Ball Z Super Movie. The Dragon Ball Super Movie. How they literally... You have Goku in the back going like this. You have Iron Man in the back going like this. You have Android 18 in the front looking like mysterious. Just like how you have Black Widow in the front looking mysterious. And so you have... The, the posters, they mirror each other. Right. You know what I mean? There's a lot of similarities. If you look at Captain Marvel. With Captain Marvel... I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Captain Marvel. When she powers up... Blonde hair, glowing eyes. Right. What does that remind you of, bro? Yes. A, a Super Saiyan. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of sim, and that this is just we haven't even scratched the surface on how much it's. In. There's a whole documentary on this, by the way. Oh, uh, really? Yes. I can't, of course I can't remember the name of it. I watched it back when I was in like eighth grade. But there's a whole documentary on how Hollywood is heavily influenced by anime. Oh, wow. We got to make, make a Black Hollywood, like, uh, make our own documentary on that. Heck, yeah. Like, my, one, of my goals is to, <laughs> just gonna, one of my goals is to buy the film rights to Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay. And eventually use, use scenes from that show. <laughs> Implement that into live action. Yeah, yeah. Separate. Exactly. And I'm hitting it right now just so no one can call me a ripper or, or yeah. whatever, you know. Or, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm admitting it right now because that's my favorite anime of all time. I love that anime. Yeah. And it's very, very underrated. But, no, a lot of creators do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of creators do it. 
The anime is, is extremely influential as all IP is. That's why original work is so important, guys, because it gives you so much leverage. Um, <clears throat> and with Lion King, that one is it, a different. It's different time. It was a different tone to it. You know, um, before Walt Disney passed away, he was heavily obsessed with Astro Boy. And, you know, don't ask me why. He's heavily obsessed with Astro Boy, which was created by the same guy who made Kimba the White Lion. When they dressed Roy, Roy Disney, about Kimba the White Lion, he had he never heard of it. Neither did, he did the Walt Disney. This is post-Lion King, right? <laughs> but it's interesting that Disney begged that same creator for Astro Boy, but just didn't know anything about Kimba the White Lion, and then makes Lion King. So... So this stuff has been going on for for years, years, centuries, right? Uh, and, and to their defense, you know, we all know about the Grimm brothers with like the with the Disney stories, Cinderella, Sleeping Cin- Beauty, all those stories. To their defense, they tracked um, how many derivatives there are of each tale. Each culture has their own version of Cinderella and things like that. Well, they they tracked that. They tracked that uh, the story of uh, Beauty and the Beast tracks back to 4000 BC. And so Beauty and the Beast is, came, the story of Beauty and the Beast has been told before the Bible. And you have to put that in perspective that a lot of these, we don't know how these stories come about. We know these stories were made to help uh, discipline and raise our children. But we don't really know anything other than that. That's why every culture has the same story. Just told differently. Just told differently. And that is a real thing. We know that uh, Lion King or Kimba was loosely based off of Hamlet, which was Shakespeare's. And so somehow, which is the most fascinating part of all this to me, is the psychological part. Somehow humans arrive to the same stories to mentor their youth and to tell. We arrive to it time and time again. And, you know, the jacking somebody and stealing, you know, someone's content or still someone's IP is the superficial part of it, but something a lot more something with a lot more depth to it that we've done for centuries, uh, for thousands and thousands of years. Like I said, Beauty and the Beast has been tracked back prior to the Bible. That story is already told. And so you have the question, it makes you ask, why do humans tell the same story time and time again? And we, 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 we usually credit it to um, some form of uh, mentorship to guide our children from what not to do. Don't trust this person because they're that. Can't judge a book by its cover. Beauty and the Beast. It, 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 all these things are our way of telling, like, teaching lessons, telling stories, as any mammal would do. So yes, and I, I think of the a good example is the original Peter Pan story. Peter Pan and Cinderella too, but let's just stick with Peter Pan because I know more about the original Peter Pan story. It's a lot darker than what they have picked on than what they depict on the movies. Peter Pan would kill some members of the Lost Boys. You know, it was a lot darker than it was. And the reason I bring this up is because it just shows you how you said original IP is important. I believe Disney, they were very creative and smart. They were they were Reese Witherspoon before Reese Witherspoon was Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, I agree, I agree. They took all these stories, these right. dark stories, right? right? And they just turned them just to the opposite of what they were. Just, oh, let's make these more light. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we did this with the character instead of this? Wouldn't it be more family friendly? Right. You know? So what they did was they, they saw a market. These stories were very, very popular back then. And they decided to turn them into more child versions of the stories. And now people think that the child version is the original version. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Just how Reese Witherspoon, like you told me, she took the, the best... New York bestsellers mm-hmm. turned them into movies because there was already audience because she started that book club mm-hmm. and everything and she turned those into movies and now she right and, uh, and so I want to give Disney a shout out for this obviously Disney does not need a shout out but <laughs> um, give them a shout out for this is they accumulate wealth and anywhere in this in this world in this modern world it comes from it comes from a, a form of real estate and so John Croc, uh, John Croc, or sorry, his name is. Uh, uh, you guys are gonna kill me for this, but um, mm, Ray Croc, sorry, Ray Croc of McDonald's. He made McDonald's a real estate business, and so McDonald's was the most real estate in the world. Well, Disney made real estate off of IP. His real estate was intellectual property, and so his wealth came. His vehicle to wealth was the real estate of owning intellectual property that was never owned prior to him. You gotta keep in mind, copywriting 
and uh, it is a fairly new thing. It's a modern world thing. It hasn't existed. Uh, since, it hasn't existed before the 1800s. Copywriting intellectual property. Right. So it's, it's new, and Disney used that leverage to build an empire that's still ongoing today. Um, the leverage of real estate of IP. And when he has these folk tales are being told since 4000 BC, like Beauty and the Beast, he asked, uh, Disney sat there and asked himself, how can I copyright this? Everyone else asked himself, how can I tell the story? He asked, how can I own the story? And that was a deciding factor of who became Disney and the ones that we never even heard of. Right. Well, as you see, though, that eventually nowadays that runs out because now you have a horror movie about Winnie the Pooh called Blood and Honey. <laughs> Which is basically a horror movie about the characters from Winnie the Pooh. Because I guess with Disney, yes, they do own these IP, but they only own them for a specific amount of time. But when that time is about to run out, they usually have lobbyists come in and they're able to extend that time. Yeah, public, to, public domain. Public domain, exactly. They try to protect these properties from reaching public domain, just like Warner Brothers just trying to protect Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all their characters from reaching public domain. Because eventually, every idea that you see out there, everything that you see, will eventually go to public domain. Exactly. It just depends on how long it's going to take and will you be alive when it eventually reaches exactly. public domain. So I guess the old saying goes, you don't never really own an idea. You never, you, ne you never really own an idea. And we talk about with money all the time, majority of wealth accumulation is defense. And you can see that with how, how hard they're trying to defend their intellectual property. Majority of wealth accumulation is defense. Um, you know, McDonald's is saying, okay, McDonald's is gone, but we still own the real estate. Right. People are like, well, we want to claim the real estate. It's like, no, we're paying taxes on it. How can you claim it? And so there'll be someone there to write a check to claim the real estate that McDonald's owns until the end of time or until they forfeit it, they, for, they forfeit the property. Well, same goes with the intellectual property. Disney's long gone. Disney could probably care less what intellectual property he's held on to. If he does, there's no power there. But his offsprings and his family who married again and married again, their job is to hire people to defend that intellectual property because that is the key to their wealth. Um, and people, some people call it greedy, you can call it whatever you want, but that's because his children did, did not become artists, because his children did not become creatives like Disney, their only job is to defend the wealth that, you know, that they, 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 they've been reaping. And so back to the start of this intellectual property thing, when you go to something like Lion King versus Kimber the White Lion, really look into it. Um, that's that's where you know you're not you're not, not going to get kudos from me. That's the best way I can put it. I'm not going to diss you. But you're not going to get kudos from me for doing that. When you do, you know, the Black Swan and the Matrix, I get more respect from me because your honesty and your approach, and that's a huge difference. Right. And like I said, I'm admitting it right now. Gonna buy the film rights to you, Haka Show. Gonna rip a lot of scenes from that show into my projects. Just, just want to admit that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if it's available, which it will be, but yeah. If it's available, you know, yeah. and, and so for manga creators, those in Japan, I mean, if this reaches you, I will be very proud of myself for how big we have grown as a podcast. But uh, if it reaches someone who knows someone who knows someone, make sure those of you who are creating the art find any way necessary to hold on to it for your people so your people can reap the benefits of your work. Exactly. I, I recommend that for everybody. You know, I have used Bad Bunny 10,000 times as a reference, but one of the biggest things about him is he's independent. And so he can really change the economy for, you know, his, his, his people because no major label here in the States owns him. And so whoever's making the art, I would love for the artist to finally own their art and, uh, you know, don't, don't, become, don't become the next Lion King. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man. That's Black Hollywood. Um, that's Black Hollywood for you.